Hello and welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Get With The Program Radio Show is a multicultural, informative, relevant, and entertaining one-hour weekly show offering you a diverse combination of guest interviews with questions and comments. And we will act as a positive source of information. Now, today, we will be joined in the studio with Catalyst Crystal Bodie Smith. And today, we are going to talk about transition from life to death transition from life to death that's gonna be a very good conversation and crystal is also the author of the book final wishes which all goes hand in hand so your final wishes and things that you're gonna do life after death you got to make sure that you're prepared when you leave here man i mean final wishes you got to get that book too i mean a guide for transitions from life to death Hey, man, it's a new release by her, so make sure you check that out. But in the meantime, before we get started with the interview, I got to reach out to my man, comedian Grave Digger. Grave Digger, my brother, talk to me, Grave. What's happening? What's happening? They got me all bummed, all bummed up here right now. The FBI is over to the house right now. They serving papers on me. I'm going to have to get up out of here, Gary. Guess what the paper said? They trying to arrest me for touching myself in 1977. Gary, I gotta get out of here. They put me in the back of the car. Y'all, y'all pray for me. Y'all, y'all get some bun money for me. I'm out of here, Gary. Gotta go. This is Dr. Gail Hayes coming to you from the Handle Your Business Girl Empowerment Zone, where we help you to handle your business where you do business. Turn on your light. Walking in the light is easy because you can see where you're going. It's walking in the dark and being willing to expose hidden things that takes courage. Are you strong enough and brave enough to clean out the ugly things lurking in the shadows once your light illuminates them? Remember that these things fear you or they wouldn't be hiding. They draw their strength from the darkness. So, turn on your light and handle your business where you do business. Promise you, the light will make it easier. This is Dr. Gail Hayes coming to you from the Handle Your Business Girl Empowerment Zone where we help you to handle your business where you do business. Hold up, hold up. Get with the program. What you talking about? The program. The program. Get with the program. Everybody clap to this. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show. Again, I am your host, Gary Jones. And I said before, Get With The Program is a multicultural, relevant, entertaining, one-hour weekly show offering you a diverse combination of guest interviews. Now, today, we are joined in the studio with Catalyst Crystal Bodie Smith. Today, we're going to talk about the transition from life to death. Now, Crystal is the author of a book titled Final Wishes. Now, just a little bit about Crystal. Crystal is the co-founder of Capital City Hope Foundation, a nonprofit headquartered in Raleigh, North Carolina, since 2012. Uh, This foundation falls under the umbrella of Crystal Bodie Smith Agency. The foundation mission is to bring awareness, empower the needy, influence the community, and to bridge the gap so everyone can enjoy a productive state of mind. Now, everything done by the organization is focused around the mission statement, stirring up the gifts, installing hope, and saving lives. Overall, Crystal Smith uh, uh, focuses on striving for success, taking one moment at a time, and not letting her losses, failures, or tragedies slow her down. Uh, uh, Ms. Crystal's uh, intention is to make an impact and leave a legacy nationwide, helping others to conquer. Hello, Crystal, and welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. Good afternoon. How you doing today? Hey, Crystal, I am good. It is a pleasure to have you here. And uh, so let, let's get right into it, Crystal. You know, you and I have known each other for a while. I've, I've been watching you for quite a bit, keeping up with you. And you've always done wonderful things in the community, as always, right? I try. I try to do my part. Yes, and you do well. You do well at that. <laughs> now, Crystal, now I, I noticed at the beginning of your name, at the title of your name, Catalyst. So tell me exactly when you say the word Catalyst, that's before your name. Tell me about that. Well, Gary, uh, basically what it is, is I consider myself a hope hacker, all mm-hmm. right, a change agent, 
agent, an igniter of hope. Mm -hmm. And what my mission is to help people to bring themselves from a hopeless to a hopeful state of mind as they go through this journey called life. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, a, that's a very good point because a lot of my listeners, that, that word alone is, is a very powerful word. And when you put it before your name, I kind of want to know. Now, our topic today is the transition from life to death. Now, a lot of people want to know, what do you mean by that? Because your book, of course, you know, your book is, you know, is, is titled uh, Final Wishes, which is also a connection because people do have final wishes, of course, from, you know, after they die. So when we talk about life and death, what are we talking about? Well, the first thing I want to say is, Gary, you know, there's many things that we take for granted in life. And one of them is um us being here on earth and, and people take for granted death. They don't talk about it. They, they shy away from it. And it's not a subject that comes up often. So the reason for this book was through my encounters and my losses, because I did lose my mom, my dad, and my brother through cancer. My sister is in remission right now. So I've seen some things. I've seen where there are many people that are uneducated and unaware and then unprepared. And that's where this came from. Hmm, okay. So, so basically, you you've kind of been through some. This kind of influenced you to move forward on helping people. Is what we're saying. Yes, uh, because uh, it started with my brother when he passed away, and uh, I couldn't find anything, and it was just so many things that were not accessible, and I couldn't proceed on without going through a process of gathering information. And at that time, I realized that people need to know what to do to prepare their loved ones in case of an unforeseen death and also in case of a, a situation where they know someone is passing away. Sometimes you have an elderly parent and you mm -hmm. have people that are going through a transition of life and you just need to know what to do to prepare for it to make it a smooth transition. Now, now I'm sitting in the studio with, with Crystal and, and I notice she has this, this, this northern look about herself and she has an accent. Crystal, tell me where you're from because I hear, I hear ah! some... I hear some stuff going on here. Yeah. Tell me about Crystal before we get too deep into the conversation. Well, you know, I'm a native New Yorker, uh, uh, a mother, a grandmother. I am just an everyday person who has a heart for people. I have compassion, and I have decided to use my life to be transparent, to help others in any situation I've been through, to try to make sure that I can be an impact and make sure that my life makes a difference. Was from my mother was from Warrington, but I'm a native. I'm the one that was born in New York, and they brought me back. So we, then, so we've made you one of us. I came back. I, I never <laughs> thought I would stay because when I left in 1982, I said yes. I was going back to the city. But when you have children, mm -hmm. you make your way back to the South to bring them up in this type of environment. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now I want I want to shift back. Now we were talking about the um, being prepared after you know after someone dies. Now, do, do you think? Crystal, that African Americans are prepared for the challenges after death in reference to bills, wills, and insurance. Absolutely not, because they don't even want to discuss it. It's not even on the table. They are, I'm going to say this, there are many people who are prepared, but as a majority, the African Americans, unfortunately, are not, because we have young parents. And we have people who uh, go back and they take care of an elderly person. And they're just some things that they just mm -hmm. didn't want to deal with. They were not they were not informed. So they just don't know. And they just kind of surprised and they wind up in a situation and they wind up coping with it and dealing with it spontaneously. Now, you just said you, you made a good point. You said that they don't know. So how, how can we uh, uh, and what can we do early uh, to prevent the problem uh, and being prepared uh, for uh, insurance after that? What can we do? Well, in my opinion, I, I've been trying to find a way to incorporate some workshops. For instance, you have these social services programs where we educate young parents on WIC and how to do certain things. I think that this should be incorporated. I believe that we need to incorporate it in any place where we have people that are considering uh, having children. I also believe it's something we need to do uh, for the elderly and just Anyone needs to be prepared because this is a part of life. It's just something that's unavoidable. And, Gary, I have to say, not only do I talk about in my book life insurance, but I talk about insurance in general because insurance is insurance. You have health insurance. You have disability insurance. You have supplemental insurance. There's so many types of insurance. So I dwell on life insurance, but I do touch lightly on the others as well. <laughs> so basically what we're saying, uh, uh, being prepared, you know, someone needs to 
kind of go to some classes or get some kind of tutoring. No, somebody needs to tell us about how important it is and be prepared uh, when you die. Well, you know what it is, Gary, is is people need a guide for transition. And, and this is everybody. I mean, you have the young adult who needs direction. You have the person that's aging and they need to know how to leave instructions for their loved ones. You know, th- those are two basic areas. You know, then you have the person who just needs to have a conversation with their children about the what ifs. And the reason why I say this is because oftentimes here lately in this this generation in this decade, you see so many people doing what we call a GoFundMe. And I'm certainly not knocking it because I know that people need help. But what I'm saying is we need to prepare for the unforeseen. And it's not expensive. Insurance for children is not expensive at all. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be budgeted in. And people need to know this is our responsibility. This is our responsibility. We need to budget this in. Mm -hmm. So why... Based on based on your knowledge and, and, and what you've done, because you've written several books, and we're going to talk about that later on in the show. Why do you think that we as a race, why are we so behind on this type of issue? Because it's, it's an emotional situation. It's confusing and it's scary and it's overwhelming. And a lot of times people just don't want to talk about it. Again, until they've been in this situation, until they have had a loss in their family, they yeah. don't bring it up. And I'm going to tell you something else. A lot of people need to understand that it is not optional. When people get this this option with their employers to pick what they want to come out of their check, a lot of times they skip over insurance, Gary. They skip over it because they want to keep the money. Hmm. And 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 you would that, would that probably be uh, uh, because... I would I hate to say the word we want to keep all the money to ourselves or we just don't want it um, or we don't believe in that insurance is going to work. Would that would that be some of the problems? Because a lot of people just don't believe that, you know, when you when you take out these these insurance policies and, and, and the insurance policy says it's one hundred thousand dollars or two hundred, three hundred, five hundred thousand. The reality of it. Can we afford it? Can we afford to pay for this? Can you afford not to? Because what happens is the children are left with the burden. The families are left. And you know what? Let me give you an example. I know a young lady about three weeks ago that she was a sibling. She had eight brothers and sisters, and the grandmother was um, sick, and the grandmother passed away. And what happened was the children found out that the grandmother had died, and they went to prepare for a funeral. So they went to get her paperwork. Well, guess what? The grandmother canceled the policy two weeks prior to because she didn't have the money. Had she had a conversation with her eight children and and some of the grandchildren, they could have they could have helped her with a payment that might have been fifty dollars, sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But okay. now they had to come up with the whole thing for a funeral, all because this person didn't have a conversation. So these are the things that happen. People think that people are covered and they're not. And people feel like they have too much pride and they can't come to their family members to say, I need help. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I noticed that throughout um, my career and watching people with insurance, a lot of this is a trickle down effect because we as African Americans, we don't make quite a lot of money as some other races make. So if you're making the money, you can buy these high insurance policies. Most of us, what, what would you say most of uh, uh, the average African-American can, can afford for a life insurance or say a burial? Because, you know, there, there, there's costs with this. Well, let me tell you this. I'm not an insurance agent. I don't try to give out that information, but I have several insurance agents I've worked with. But I will tell you this. There's a policy out there for every situation, for every person in every income bracket. Mm-hmm. There are different types of policies. The people have to do their homework. They just have to do their homework. There is a policy out there that each person can afford that fits into their budget. They just have to understand that it is something that they need to do and they need to put it in there. It needs to come before a lot of these other things that they do that are not necessary. Right, because that, that's a very important fact because there, there is there is types of the burial and then there's, of course, a life insurance policy where people can get money to take care of all type of bills. And, and again, that stuff costs money. Now, I, I can remember... Uh, back in the day when I was younger, when our, so my grandmother and I can remember the insurance man coming to the house mm-hmm. to collect the payments mm-hmm. back then. And my grandparents, they believed, my grandmother believed in, in, in life insurance policy. She believed in it. And is, is that, you think that's still going on? The people actually still go to door to door? And is that still important? 
Because a lot of us can't get out. We don't, we're not educated. And you right. mentioned before, we need to be educated on this. Somewhere we need to know more about this. Exactly. Uh, to answer your question, I do not think that in this generation and in this day and time that these younger parents are taking time out to educate their children. Um, we came in a different time and era. As you said, our grandparents talked about it. It's not the same these days. Mm -hmm. So it is not a conversation. It's not happening. In the African-American home, it is not something that is being dealt with at all. In most cases, unless they see it on the news, unless they hear about it, and they find out that someone had an unforeseen death, and then they see and they say, oh, my goodness, I don't want that to happen to me, and that's when they begin to do it. Wow. Once again, to my listeners, in case you're just joining into the show, today we are joined in the studio with Catalyst Crystal Bodie Smith. And today we're talking about the transition from life to death. Crystal is also the author of a book called Final Wishes. So all of this kind of goes together. We're in the studio with Crystal, and we're, we're talking about what you need to be preparing for, what you need to be ready for, because we're all going to go one day. We're going to die one day. So once again, don't touch the dial. We're going to be right back with more conversation with Crystal after this important message. Get with the program. What you talking about? The program. Now. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show. Once again, I'm your host, Gary Jones, and today we are in the studio with Catalyst Crystal Bodie Smith, and our conversation is Transition From Life To Death. And that's a really good conversation. Hey, Crystal, but, you know, we, we talked about a lot of things before we took the break, but what I want to ask you now, uh, some people think that life insurance costs too much and the reality of 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 getting a good return i mean they're not confident and and you said that they need to be they need to understand having something is better than having nothing how do we how can we overcome that fear i mean how can we how can we over, do we need some proof to show that some other people are receiving money because we need to figure a way to overcome that fear and 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 get this message out to them how do we do that well, first of all, they just need to do their homework and read because, uh, Gary, insurance policies pay out. They mm -hmm. pay out. They have to. I mean, it's a legal binding contract, and as long as the person is paying, they the beneficiaries do get paid out. Uh, so that's, that's not even an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, those people that are concerned about it, I don't think the concern is paying out. I think the concern is, is it important enough for me to do it? Well, guess what? We have car insurance. Mm -hmm. But we don't need it. But we're forced to have car insurance because we can't drive a car because DMV said we have to have it. There's nothing forcing us to have life insurance. Good, good point. Do you think we should? Do you think we should be forced to have life insurance? We need to be forced because it's not fair to the children. These babies are born into this world unprepared, and it's not fair to the family members that are left in these situations, having to cover and make ends meet and do what they have to do because somebody passed away and they did not lay it out for everyone. Now, you made a very good point. You made a very good point that we are to be forced to have uh, life insurance. That, that's a very good point, and I'm, I'm digging that. So I want to touch back on that again because that, that's a good point. That might be something that we just started on, you know, because health insurance has been forced to have life insurance. So now Obamacare, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. life insurance is something we need to think about. Do, do you think now with, with, our, with our current president in office, and mm -hmm. do you think that um, with the patterns that he's going with insurance and the things, the decisions that, he, that he's making, do you think he will have some kind of effect on life insurance down the road? You know what? I definitely need to plead the fifth when you start talking about this current president because then I'm going to get all off topic with that because I don't know what that man thinking. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, I don't know what that man thinking. I don't even want to say his name. Right, right, right. <laughs> no problem. So, um, wow, that's, that, that's interesting. Now, when, when, I noticed that when funerals, because when someone dies, uh, particularly in some of the African-American communities, there's, there's always 
some arguments. Drama. Um, that's, that's, drama. Go ahead and say I, it. I, I hate drama. to say drama. Not for everyone. I'm not going to say everyone, <laughs> but you know, it'd be somebody in the family that you, that you just been wanting to say something to, and it's drama. And then if it's money to be split with these insurance policies, mm-hmm. th- there's going to be somebody that's the executor of the account, mm-hmm. and somebody's going to be in control, mm-hmm. and there's arguments. Mm-hmm. So what do we do? I mean, how do we, why do we go through this type of stuff? Because it's not written out. It's not pre-planned. And this is what I'm saying. Not only am I saying that we need to get insurance, the reason this book is called Final Wishes is you need to lay out who you want to handle your business. If you write everything out, there's no room for argument, except for those who just want to challenge everything, because you know there's always going to be that one person that's going to challenge things, but it does it does definitely cut back on those those situations, for sure. If you write it out, and you make the plane, then people have to abide by what you wrote. If you don't write it out, then they're going to just do what they want to do. Then we're going to have a problem. And and that goes back to part of the final wishes, because we're going to touch the final wishes, the book that she's written. We're going to touch on that. Now, what are some of the some of your personal experiences or compelling arguments that have influenced your thinking around the development of hope? Because you mean you talked earlier about how important it is to have hope mm-hmm. in your life. What what influenced you? What happened? Because things people people do things they're driven to do right. things behind influences. What happened to you? What made me a hope catalyst? Wow, that's deep. That that's a whole nother that's a whole nother segment. That's like a whole nother hour. Okay, I mean you know Crystal had become a hope catalyst because of the deaths in the family because of the 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 mistakes that I've made in life. Uh, Mistakes. One of the mistakes, let me be transparent. One of the mistakes I made was on an insurance policy. Wow. I made a mistake on an insurance policy that made me write this book because I want to make sure nobody else makes that What ha- What, what happened? You mind sharing? You know. Uh, it, it was an omission that I made, and that omission cost me $100,000. Cost wow. me $100,000. Also, one of the things that helped me to write this book was, if I can be transparent, because people, if you live in certain states, sometimes you have what you call common law husbands and wives, and um, I'm just going to be transparent because, like I said, my life is for a purpose, to help somebody. Um, Use my brother, for example. When my brother passed away, when he got sick and the doctor gave him six months to live, when I went to New York to help him and I did go to his job and check all the paperwork, well, he never changed everything, so his ex was on everything. Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm telling people you have to go back and you have to read. When you go back and you go take care of a family member, especially the elderly people, don't take their word for it. Go check the documentation because sometimes these elderly people, their stuff has expired. They've termed out of their life insurance and they they need to get a new policy. But going back to my brother, what happened was everything still had his ex-girlfriend on it. Wow. And he thought that he had changed it, but he didn't. And uh, because of the way the uh, law, you know, went, and everything transpired, long story short, uh, it became an ugly situation. It became an ugly situation, and it became a situation where as she tried to make it seem like he was incompetent when he went to go change the information, which he wasn't, but that was called greed. So, again, when I tell people, go back, dot your I's, cross your T's, protect your family, protect your children, especially when, again, another situation, when these husbands remarry. And then these stepmothers, these evil stepmothers come and they try to keep these children from getting what's rightfully theirs. You got to write it out because I'm telling you right now. Money money changes the game. Money changes changes the game. game People agree. Right. People agree. And when when somebody dies and and you haven't gotten haven't gotten it written out, money changes the game. Because I've seen instances where people have children that they didn't know about. Hmm. Or had wives mm-hmm. that weren't, you know, the, the, the husband wasn't divorced. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden he dies and his new wife or his girlfriend or something that's been mm-hmm. living with him for years, mm-hmm. taking care of this man. He's been sick all his life. And all of a sudden the wife comes back in and say, hey, she wants the bread. It happens. So you're absolutely right. Put that, take, take care of your business. And if I could talk about one other thing that's sure. important, oversight. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people don't realize that. You just have to go back and you need to review. There are some people who have policies. So let's talk to the people who have insurance, Gary. Okay. People who have insurance need to understand that you need to go back and review those policies. You need to revisit them every couple of years because people pass away. People age out. 
people get married and you have to update this information. And I don't want to see people get in a position because they didn't update something that that's an issue. Mm -hmm. So the few things as you can see, my book is not very, very thick. Oh, yeah. We're going to come to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's very informative because Mm -hmm. I know that our people don't want to read. Mm-hmm. So I had to make it simple. I went straight in. It's very simple. It's to the point. And I also left room in the book for people to write down some things. They can write it inside the book. So it's it's a one stop shop. That's wonderful. So so and we and definitely gonna talk about the book because the book is it's, it's a good read. So can, can can you talk a little bit about some of the specific ways that you have advocated for change and the success for individuals who need hope? What because I know you're out there. I know you're speaking. I know you've been places. So tell me some of the things that that you've done. Well, you know, just. For instance, like like right now, today I'm going to pick up some toys for single moms. Okay, uh, I it I saw the need with some people, and I'm just one little person. I'm just a person that has a co-founder. Then you see hopped in it together. We founded Capital City Hope Foundation, and and something said because I I I saw some things on Facebook, and I put the word out. It turned into 136 families and 376 children, Gary. So you see that if we are Leaving our eyes open and we are looking at our brothers and sisters. There's so many things we can do to help each other. If I have helped furnish people's uh, apartments, mm-hmm. give people jobs, uh, work with other community people that have something. I try to do whatever I can to help individuals get back to a productive state. It's not about me. We are not here for ourselves. We are here for each other. So that's 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 part of giving hope. That's, that's it. the whole hope thing. That's, that's it. You know, and, and, and having hope. Faith is good. Yes. I hear, oh, I, I, boy. I, I hear you, faith. you said a mouthful. I, I hear faith is good. Woo. But what, what does the Bible? The Bible says faith Woo. with no work faith is what? Faith without work is dead. But is guess dead what? If you don't have hope, if you don't have a relationship with God and you don't know what faith is, you don't, it, then you're still out there. So you got to have hope. Hope is believing that you're going to see your next birthday. Mm-hmm. Hope is believing that you're going to have a meal when you don't have no money in your pocket. If you don't have hope, you don't want to eat because you're not hungry. You're hopeless. You don't even want to get up out of the bed. Mm-hmm. You have to have hope. You have to have a reason and a why that makes you want to push yourself to get past the pain, to get past the hurdle. You got to want to leap. And if you don't have hope, you're not doing none of that. So so what are, so what are some of the things that that uh that, that you would say that that could cause a person to want to just give up hope because because people give up. I mean, sometimes different reasons. They just say, "Look, I, I'm just it just ain't gonna work." What would you think would be oh, something? Boy. that, that if, if somebody I could be transparent. People give up because they don't have the money to do what they need to do. Because the money, the Bible also says, money answers all things. People are in a hopeless state of mind because they don't have the money to do what they need to do to live a fruitful life. Uh, they have a mentality where they are stuck and they don't know how to bring themselves out of the situation. Now, there are a few. There are many. Um, let me say many. There are many that do know how to do it, but they they need motivation. They need mm-hmm. to know that they need to come out of this situation they're in and they can do better. And that's mm-hmm. where I come in. I try to help people understand you can be anything you want to be. You just have to know how to get that mentoring. Right, right. Once again, if you just tuned into the show, we're in the studio today with Hope Catalyst, Crystal Bodie Smith. And we're talking about the transition from life to death. She's also the author of a current book called Final Wishes. Crystal's also a motivational speaker. She does workshops. So if you're interested in checking her out, man, she's, she's got a lot of stuff going on. So Crystal, tell me about your, um, let's talk about your book. Let's talk about Final Wishes. What, what influenced you to write this book? Cause Bottom I, line is just all the situations and I didn't want been anybody to go through what I went through. Mm-hmm. I didn't want it. I didn't want anybody. Everything I do is because I I tried to see how I overcame it, and I want people to understand that they need to educate themselves. And if more of us are transparent, if more of us go back and give back and pull back somebody up and share what we went through, a lot of people would be better off. Oh, that's wonderful. That's that's wonderful to know. Now, now you've written several books. From my, I noticed on your site, you've written some more books, right? I have written other books. They haven't been uh, published yet. I have a book coming out that's just called Shattered But Not Broken. <laughs> and I have a couple of different books that I'm not going to give the title yet, but I have quite a few. I've actually written four. Mm-hmm. And uh, just trying to let God lead me because uh, right now I'm in the process of helping individuals. What I do, Gary, is I help individuals that for some reason when I come across them because they don't have the money for such things as holidays because they don't have the money for insurance. I talk with these people and I help them to get 
to a point where they can get a residual income to get them in position so that they can change their life and they can be more productive. And so that's where I am now. I'm trying to find people that are open to getting the teaching so that they can better themselves so that in 2018 they can have the life that they deserve. Mm -hmm, That's wonderful. Now, we're we're getting close to wrapping this up now. Crystal, is there anything that you would like to uh, touch bases on before we wrap this up, did you want to tell my listeners? Because you got a lot of stuff going on. And and another thing I want to make sure, like I said before, she's a motivational speaker. So if you wanted to come out and speak at your event, she does workshops. How can someone get in contact with you? What is the, the contact information, your website and your phone numbers? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, my website is www.iamcrystalbodysmith.com. That's C-R-Y-S-T-A-L. B O D I E S M I T H. You can reach me on Facebook at Crystal <laughs> Bodie Smith. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Shout Crystal. You can reach me at 919-395-0493. Once again, that's 919-395-0493. My email is Shout Crystal at gmail one of the things i want to let everybody know is that Mm -hmm. we really can't waste time because time is of the essence and benjamin mays had a poem that i always use when i tell people about what they need to do Mm -hmm. any decision you make don't procrastinate because we need to get done today we can't put it off to tomorrow guys i'm here for you if you need some help if you need some motivation if you need some direction i am your hope hacker i am your change agent i am the igniter of hope i can help you stir up your gift and I can definitely instill your hope and change your life. I'll leave you with these words that says, sure. mm-hmm. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me and you to use it. We must suffer if we lose it, give account if we abuse it. It's just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. So give me a call if you need any assistance in any area. I'm available for you. I'm available to direct you, and I'm certainly available. Check out the book, Final Wishes, A Guide for Transition from Life to Death. It's on Amazon.com. If you search Final Wishes by Crystal Bodie Smith, mm-hmm. you will find it. Make sure you put my name in there because there is another book called Final Wishes. Okay. And um, I'm available to come out, talk wow. to their young mothers, and do what you need. That's, that's, that's good information Good information to know. Now, um, we touched a lot of things today, and... What I know my listeners got, and I know that I got that you mentioned, was that make sure that there's always some situations that happen after you die. Make sure that you got all of your information in place. In a place, yes, sir. And, 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 if you're, and if your parents or your grandmother is older, make sure that her stuff is in place. And that's what we heard. And talk. Go home and ask. You know what? If you're listening to this radio show today, I want you to do me a favor. After this radio show, I want you to turn to the person. I want you to go to your parent. I want you to go to your sibling. I want you to go to your children. I want you to ask them, do you have insurance? Is your insurance policy paid up? Mm-hmm. Have that conversation and ask them about it and ask them, what are your final wishes? Mm-hmm. Just ask them. Mm-hmm. If you're a business owner, you need to know. And you need to convey that because if you want your business to continue, you need to tell your family how you want them to continue. That's a part of final wishes. Mm-hmm. If you're a parent, if you have to decide how to distribute the monies, who to split it up with. You need to decide if something happened to you, who you want to take care of your child in the unforeseen situation. You need to know, is it going to be grandmama? Is it going to be your aunt Sue? Who do you want to take care of your child? You need to have these conversations. It mm-hmm. makes it easy. It's just not fair. It's not fair, God, to leave it on people to have to make these choices. Give them directions and pay for some insurance. A child, an infant, $2. $2, you can get insurance. $10,000, you can bury them. $5, $10, stop getting their hair done. Stop going out there and spending money on unnecessary stuff and put it on insurance. Mm. Wow, that's that that got that ran chills through my spine. I'm telling you because she's absolutely right with that. Make sure that you have everything in place. Make sure your eyes are dotted, your T's are crossed. Because at the end of the day, once that person is dead and gone, and if there's things to be split, they can't say anything about it. It's just a big argument if you don't have it all together and in place. And you know, also. I've seen instances where the, the, the parent that was living have left something uh, in charge for a particular child. But that child at that time 
when uh, at the time of the death may not be in a position or may not be uh, 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 stable enough could be doing something that they shouldn't be doing with the money. Uh, let me just be straight with it. They could be they could be doing drugs. They could be doing anything, and they may not do the right thing with the money because time changes things. So make sure that who you leave stuff with should they have a backup. They put, stipulate in there. You can stipulate uh, certain things like if you leave money to a certain child, you can stipulate they only get a certain amount. You can put it in a trust. You can definitely write it out. Get an attorney. I am not an attorney. I am not an insurance agent. I am just like you. All I'm saying is get someone with the expertise and let them guide you. If you need direction, call me. I'll point you in the right direction. I have people I work with, but you just need to take care of it and find out who you need to talk to and get it done. Wow. Crystal, Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to see you. Yes. Once again, if you just joined the studio, we had Miss uh, 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 Hope Catalyst Crystal Bodie Smith in the studio today. And we were talking about the transition from life to death. Such a wonderful conversation. If you missed it, hey, <clears throat> you missed a good one today. You just never know. But you can get in contact with Crystal. She gave you the information. She gave you the website. Give her a call. She'll come out and speak at your event. And she'll bring a workshop to you. Hey, man, it's, it's all about knowing how to make things happen. Once again, I am thankful that you tuned in today to get with the program radio show. I am your host, Gary Jones. So until next time, always remember to do what? Get with the program. <laughs>